And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to make one of my favorite pork tenderloin dishes. It's a, a, a hoisin and sesame glazed roasted tenderloin. To go alongside that, we're going to have some rice. Then we're going to have a sauteed spinach and kale and chard mixture that is so good and so healthy for you. And then to go alongside that, we're going to have roasted cauliflower. Now, I have my oven preheated to 425 degrees, and here in front of me, when you buy pork tenderloin, now for this recipe, I use tenderloin because it cooks quicker. You could use the loin, pork loin, the boneless pork loin, but remember, it's going to take a lot longer to cook. When you purchase tenderloins, it comes like this in, in a like a, a vacuum seal bag, but there are actually two tenderloins in each bag, so remember that. But this is, even if you're just cooking for one or two people, I would go ahead and roast them both because it really um, makes great sandwiches the next day. It also is great in like a stir fried rice or something like that a day or two later. So I would go ahead and cook it all. But if you really don't want to, you could freeze one of those would be fine. Now remember that tenderloins will have this strip I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Below that little fat cap is what's called the silver skin, and it's got fibers that run this way. And you need to trim that off because that will not break down. As a matter of fact, it will contract. So you need to trim that off with just a sharp little paring knife or a boning knife. There's a good shot of it. You see how it's right there? That, that's what you want to trim off. It's very fibrous and it's just not good and you need to just trim that off. It's called the silver skin. Get all that off. Now tenderloin is a very, very lean cut of pork, but it really is good. Now there's a little fat there. I'm not worried about the fat. I just want that silver skin. If there's a whole lot of fat, you could of course trim that off and just discard that because it is truly not edible. And then place it on a lined little baking sheet. We'll do the same thing with this one. Let's trim that tenderloin off, or the silver skin off of the tenderloin. Just get your paring knife or a boning knife just underneath it, and then you see how I'm holding that up and just trimming at the same time. That's what you want to do. I'm just barely getting that now. I'm not getting a whole lot of meat with that. I'm just getting that fibrous silver skin off there. This one didn't have very much at all. And then the little tail end, this is the head end, this is the tail end. It's a little bit thinner, so I like to kind of fold that sideways. Let me show you, just like this to kind of give it a little protection from the heat because this end obviously is gonna take longer. So if you fold that over just like that, it, it really kind of makes it all the same length. Now this recipe could not be easier. Oven is preheated. I'm going to take a little bit of salt, just a little salt. Kosher, I always use kosher salt. I get asked that a lot. What kind of salt do you use? And a little bit of pepper. For me, it has to be fresh ground. I have never had anyone say to me, I tried that fresh ground pepper and I really prefer the can. I've never had anybody say that. It's always the opposite. Now in my cup, I have some hoisin sauce. This is what it looks like, H-O-I-S-I-N. It'll be where you buy the soy sauce and things like that. And I've got just maybe about half a cup. And I'm going to add some sesame oil. 
Now sesame oil is a flavoring oil, about a tablespoon or so. It's a very strong oil, but it's delicious. Kind of mix that up and I'm gonna spoon that over top of my tenderloin and I'm gonna brush it. If you don't have a little pastry brush, you could just use a, um, a spoon. Just brush it all over. This is gonna form like the glaze. Let me grab a pair of tongs, turn it over, do the other side. That's why I have my baking sheet lined so that it doesn't make a mess on the sheet, on the baking sheet, and it makes it a whole lot easier to clean up. This is a very delicious recipe. One of my family's favorites. And it cooks so quick. That's why I use tenderloin. Even when I don't get home till like five o'clock in the evening, five or 5.30, these cook in literally about 25 to 30 minutes all the way through. Now I don't wanna add any more salt to that, but I am gonna add a little more pepper. The hoisin has some salt in it, so I don't want to add any more salt, but I am going to add a little pepper to that. And then put it in a preheated 425 degree oven for about 25 minutes or so, and I'll, I'll show you what it looks like at the end, and that's all there is to it. This is very hands-off and easy and quick, and it's delicious, and everyone's going to like it. My boys go crazy over that dish. I always have to cook a lot because, you know, I'm feeding two teenage boys, but they like it in their lunchbox the next day at school, and it makes a great little, um, you know, leftover lunch for them or for you to take to work. It really is good. And like I said, you can use the loin. If you get the loin, the pork loin instead of the pork tenderloin, trim off some of that fat cap that can be on the loin because that can be a little fatty, and then... Um, if it has any silver skin, trim it off. And then remember that you proceed the same way that I did, only you're gonna need to roast it for longer, probably I would say an hour. So just keep that in mind. And it's not as tender as the tenderloin, but it's still very, very good. I'm gonna take a quick break and when I come back, we're gonna get the cauliflower ready to go in the oven because it's gonna roast alongside the pork. And we're gonna start on our rice and our greens. I'll be back in just a minute. All right, now our tenderloin is roasting in the oven and we're going to roast alongside that some cauliflower. Now, cauliflower, I think a lot of people just are intimidated by the shape and they don't know what to do with it. It is one of my favorite vegetables and it's so healthy and so good for you. When you wanna buy cauliflower, let me just kinda give you a little little bit of a hint tip here. It'll come with some green things around. Now we've already trimmed those off, uh, little leaves. But you want the buds, the head of the cauliflower to be tight. You don't want it to be loose. You don't want there to be any brown spots. You just want beautiful, this is a perfect little head of cauliflower. It comes in, I've seen it in green, I've seen it in purple, and I've seen it in like an orangey yellow. It, they're all delicious, but the white is the traditional cauliflower. There are so many ways to cook it. But now, I want to cut this off, but not, not too far up, because I want to leave that stem intact. Now, I'm just going to take a little knife, and I'm just going to get these. I'm going to cut in, as you see, just enough to get those thicker outer leaves off. I don't want to cut too much of that off, but I think I'm going to have to cut a little more of the, that off. I don't mind the little
little tender ones like that. It's just the thicker ones I want to get off there. And we're going to cut this into steaks. If you don't want to do it this way, you could just cut it into florets. The way that you do that, on your board, start over here. We'll cut it in half first. There's what it looks like on the inside. Kind of looks like a brain, doesn't it? And if any loose little pieces like that fall off, by all means, roast those. Cut it into thick pieces, just like that. As thick as you can. And then, like the edges, just, and I'm going to go ahead and put all those little pieces on there because they're going to get nice and golden and I'm going to eat them. Just into little, thin steaks, if you will. And if you want to cut those in half, you can. I just like the way they look. If you want to just cut it into florets, you can do that too. Put it on a lined little baking sheet, just like this one. And we're going to drizzle it with, I'm using olive oil here. You could use vegetable oil or canola oil, but I'm going to use olive oil because I want that little bit of extra flavor. A little salt. A little pepper. Love cauliflower. Cauliflower has a very neutral flavor. It is a member of what's called the cruciferous family of vegetables, which means it's very healthy for you and can help prevent some cancers of different kinds. Very healthy, along with like broccoli, um, greens. See, if they fall apart, that's okay. That's kind of why I wanted to leave that stem in there, but if some of the little florets come on. That's okay, don't worry about it. Now, I'm turning it over and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Salt, little oil, because the oil's gonna help caramelize it. And olive oil is a heart healthy oil, in case you didn't know that. Little pepper. Or in my case, a lot of pepper. And now I'm going to sprinkle it with just, this is optional. I like a little heat. So I'm going to sprinkle it with just a pinch of the red pepper flakes. If you don't like heat, you do not have to put the little red pepper flakes on there. I just really like that little pop of heat. A little bit goes a long way with those. 425 degrees along with the pork tenderloin. These will take about 20, 25 minutes, just the same as the pork. So there you go. Got two things in the oven right now. Now, in this pot, I've got some water that I'm bringing up to a boil because I, it just goes great with rice as a, a bed to put that pork on and the juices that are gonna come out of that pork and mix with that hoisin sauce and it's gonna make a wonderful, delicious sauce for the tenderloin and it'll go great over the rice. Now, for another little side dish, anyone that's watched this program knows I'm, I'm a big vegetable eater. I love vegetables. Now, I'm not a vegetarian, obviously, I probably could be, though, because I really do like a lot of vegetables. In the grocery stores now, I get very excited because I see these bags of different mixtures of greens and, um, you know, uh, the harder, harder, heart healthier mixture. Now, I've done this recipe with just kale, and actually that's the original recipe that I've done forever is just kale. And I know now kale has become kind of like the it food of the moment, if you will. It's the superfood of the moment. And it is extremely healthy and it is extremely good. But I have discovered in the grocery stores, they sell these bags, which this is really designed as a salad, but you can cook this. I don't know if you, you knew that or not. And this is baby kale and Swiss chard and spinach. And let me show you what the differences are. And they're all three delicious 
and they're all three good for you. So this is what it looks like. And now, the ones with the little red veins are Swiss chard, which is extremely healthy. All of these things are extremely healthy. The little ones with the little um, jagged edges here, that's your baby kale. And then, of course, the flat leaf one is the spinach. Because they're younger and more uh, tender greens, they're going to saute in just seriously a matter of three or four minutes. So I like to use the mixture of these. If you, for whatever reason, don't want to use this or can't find it, I find it everywhere, but maybe you don't like spinach or something like that, you could just get some kale in the grocery store and strip out that thick, thick, thick rib of the kale and then cut it up into bite-sized pieces. But we're gonna use all three because they're delicious and they're healthy. I'm gonna take a quick break and when I come back, that should be done and then we'll saute this and we'll get the rice cooking. I'm just using boil in the bag rice. That's all we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you how I kind of jazz it up a little bit, but just boil in the bag rice. I like this. And then um, we'll get this sauteed and then the best part we're gonna eat. I'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, now our cauliflower and our pork tenderloin are roasting. The water came up to boil and all I did was put the, I, I'm using four bags of rice because I really like rice as well as everybody else that I'm feeding. And I'm gonna cook all the rice because if you have any leftover, it can be used in so many different ways if you have leftovers. That needs to cook for about 10 minutes. I have a large skillet here that I am preheating and I've got about a tablespoon of olive oil because that's what I had out. If you don't have olive oil, you can use canola oil because we're gonna flavor it up in so many different ways that the flavor of the olive oil won't come through, but that's what I had out, so that's what I'm using. Now I'm gonna do two bags of the um, kale mixture because it's gonna cook down you know, it's like that spinach where you get fresh bags of spinach and it looks like you've got a mountain. And then when you get done, you have just this little tiny amount. It's gonna be the same thing here because this will wilt down quite a bit. This makes a great salad mix too, which is actually how it's packaged. But I use it for cooking too. Now, that's gonna wilt fairly quickly. Let's get to help it along, I'm gonna add about a fourth of a cup or so of water, maybe not even the whole fourth of a cup. And then to flavor it, I am gonna add some more sesame oil. Now, ses the dark roasted sesame oil is a flavoring oil. It is not a cooking oil, so don't make that mistake and think that you can cook with it because you can't. It is strictly for flavoring. And when you open your bag, and not my greens are going over here, be sure, or when you open the bottle of oil, comes like this, make sure once you open it that you put it in the refrigerator. You might need to take it out a few minutes and kind of let it come to room temperature if it thickens up some, because that will go rancid pretty quickly if you leave it out. But it stores great in the refrigerator. Now, they're starting to wilt. Just takes a minute, you don't want to overdo. I'm gonna use, I found this in my grocery store, which is just a tube of the pre-chopped up ginger, and I'm gonna use that. If you don't have this, you can use some fresh ginger that you grate. Don't use the dry ginger in this recipe. If you don't have ginger, leave it out, because the dry ginger is not the same flavor, and it is not interchangeable. At least in my recipes, it's not. I don't think in anybody's recipes, but in mine, I know it's not. Two different flavor profiles. You see how that's starting to just wilt down? I'm gonna add a little bit of soy, a couple of tablespoons, 
see how much you need before you finish it off. It really only takes a couple of minutes. Soy sauce has a lot of salt, so don't add any more salt. It just takes a minute. Just use your tongs or whatever you're using to stir and keep it going. I'm not gonna add any salt, but I am gonna add a little bit of pepper. That's about it. Cut the heat because that, the residual heat is going to finish cooking those. It doesn't take very long. If you wanna put the lid on to let them steam, you can. Rice is cooking. Let's check on the cauliflower because I bet the cauliflower is done. Oh yeah. I'll check. Look at that. I'm gonna let that pork go for just a few more minutes. Look how delicious that looks. This is just roasted cauliflower, which honestly, I could make a meal on that. I could eat every bit of that myself and be fine. I love it. It's really very, very, very good. And if you want to kind of marry the flavors together, you could drizzle this with a little bit of the sesame oil, but I, I don't think we need to. But here's one, what I was talking about, those little tiny pieces that get so brown. Mm, they get nutty and absolutely delicious. One of my favorite ways to have cauliflower is to roast it. And oftentimes I will do this and then I will add like some chopped up uh, sun-dried tomatoes is wonderful with this. I'm just gonna let the rice cook. Our greens are done. And this meal is almost ready to go. All right, now our rice is done. I drained it and I just, all I did was cut open the bags and put the rice in this pot. It's just white rice. Then I'm gonna add some soy sauce. Be careful, I took my lid off. If you do like I do and take out that little thing, be careful because it will pour out pretty quickly. But I hate those little stoppers. You want about a, I don't know, a third of a cup, fourth of a cup of soy. And you don't have to do this part. I just, this is how I like rice. And I always add some sesame oil to my rice. It just makes it wonderful. And I like a little bit of sesame seed in my rice. You don't have to if you don't want it, but it just adds flavor. My boys will eat this whole pot. They would absolutely eat every bit of this between the two of them that way. Now I've got one of our cauliflower steaks I'm gonna put some rice here, and I'm gonna put the tenderloin over that. Then I'm going to be put our beautiful greens. See how much they cook down? Right there. Mmm, 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 mmm. Love those. And now I'm gonna show you. Now, this is our finished pork tenderloin. Look at how much sauce is left over. That's going to be your sauce for your pork once we slice it. You see all those juices? This is hot, so don't throw that away. That's delicious. Our tenderloin is done. I want to show you something because I bet many of you don't do this. I know, you know, some people just don't know when is meat done. Invest in a little thermometer like this or a little digital thermometer. These are like $5, and I promise you it will make all the difference in the world in your cooking. Insert it into the thickest part of the meat. If it has a bone without touching bone, let it sit there for a minute and let the temperature rise, as you can see there. 160 degrees is the way I like pork. So that way you know it's done. If you don't know how to tell when meat is done, that really, this little thermometer, and I have a digital one at home, it, it makes all the difference in the world. When you take your meat out, let it set for about five minutes before you start carving it. But if you will buy a meat thermometer, your meat won't be dried out and dry and tasteless. It'll be delicious and juicy because you'll know when it's to the temperature you want it. Now. I'm going to just cut this. See, look at that. Look how juicy. People say, you can't cook pork because it's dry. It's because you're overcooking it. Or chicken. Chicken is a real big 
a fender with dry, tasteless. And I like to lay maybe three slices or so over my rice. And then, don't forget, we've got those wonderful little juices. And I'm going to take some of that and just pour over that tenderloin. Start to finish, you could have that meal right there on the table in less than 45 minutes from start to finish. This will cook in about 25 minutes at the same time for the cauliflower, and I'm allowing prep. The rice cooks in 10, the greens cook in five at the most, so you can cook at home quicker than you can drive to a restaurant or order pizza. And you're controlling what's in your diet, it's also much healthier for you and less expensive. Uh, just for garnishing, I'm gonna sprinkle just a little bit of sesame seeds over top. Mm -mm. And there you go, a wonderful, easy, delicious meal that you can make any day of the week. Thank you for joining with me and I will see you next time on Everyday Mama. Thank you for watching Everyday Mana with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Mana, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.